Hey there, Awana families. This is Pastor Carlos, and welcome once again to this week's Council Time message. Today, we are going to answer the question, how shall we then live? Uh, we could ask the same question differently. We could ask, uh, what is our purpose in life? Uh, what is the most important thing in life? Uh, what should our number one goal be? I believe we will find our answer to this question in Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Uh, I would like for us to begin, though, reading at verse 7. Uh, Paul says, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and may be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know Him, and the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to His death, in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on in order that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. I am entitling my message, How Then Should We Live? I will build my message around three observations regarding Paul that should shape the way we live. And so let us begin with observation number one. Paul lived with purpose. He lived with purpose. And we see this in verses 10 through 11 where Paul says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. This verse makes it clear that Paul lived with purpose. His purpose can be broken down into four parts. First, Paul wants to know Christ. The word know is a relational term. Uh, Paul is not referring to a mere head knowledge. He is referring to relational knowledge. He wants to know Christ personally. Second, Paul wants to know the power of Christ's resurrection. He is convinced that Christ was miraculously raised bodily from the dead, and Paul sees the resurrection of Christ as a powerful event. Think about it. A dead person raised to life? Christ was raised to life. His cold, lifeless body was brought to life. This is power. And Paul wants to know the power of Christ's resurrection in his own life. He wants to experience the power of God in his life to help him live for the glory of God. Third, Paul wants to know the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. Paul knew well that Christ suffered in this world. Christ was questioned, badgered, ridiculed, persecuted, tortured, spat upon, mocked at, ridiculed, crucified, and killed on a cross of wood, all because he claimed to know and to be the truth. The Apostle Paul wants to share in the sufferings of Christ. Paul is willing to endure suffering for the sake of truth. In fact, he is willing to die for Christ, and this is what does later happen in his own life. He dies for Christ. He sees this as a sharing in the suffering of Christ. He views this as a form of fellowship, and Paul wanted to experience such a fellowship. Fourth, Paul wants to attain to the resurrection from the dead. 
Paul looks into the future and he sees a day after living life in this fallen world when he will be raised from the dead. He looks forward to such a day and he seeks to live life with the hope of a future resurrection in view. He knows that on that day, uh, he will see the Lord Jesus face to face. Uh, when you think about it, Paul's goal in life is Christ. His purpose is to know Christ, to know the power of Christ's resurrection, to know the fellowship of Christ's sufferings, and to be raised from the dead to see Christ face to face. Paul lived with purpose. And this brings us to observation number two. Paul lived with humility. Paul lived with humility. He says, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect. This is Paul's humble way of saying he has room to grow. He knows he has not arrived. This is Paul demonstrating great humility. The humble person knows he has room to grow. He knows he is no better than other people. And because of this, he doesn't look down on others. Uh, he is not one to ridicule others for the ways that they fall short. And this is not to say that Paul winks at sin. He does not ignore the sin that he sees in others, but he is careful when addressing sin to do so with a humble attitude. He humbly acknowledges he has plenty of room for spiritual growth himself. Well, let us turn to observation number three. Uh, Paul lived with determination. Paul lived with determination. You could use the word perseverance. Uh, he was a man who would never quit. The text says, but I press on. Let me repeat, but I press on in order that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Now take note of the phrase, I press on. Paul is in hot pursuit. He is chasing. He is grabbing hold of that for which Christ has grabbed hold of him for. Paul is determined to grab hold of his relationship with Christ. He wants to know Christ. He wants to experience Christ. He wants to foster his friendship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's determined that nothing will come between him and his determination to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are reading carefully, you will see that the pursuit of this relationship was initiated by Christ himself. It is the Lord who first goes after the sinner. Paul says, I was laid hold of by Christ. Paul's pursuit of Christ is in response to Christ's pursuit of him to begin with. And we have seen that Paul lived with purpose, humility, and determination. I pray your goal in life will be to know Christ more and more. I pray uh, you will be humble in your pursuit of Christ, and that in your determination, you will allow nothing to stop you in your pursuit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, young people, once again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, may the Lord greatly bless every single one of you.